So for those who follow me on Twitter, you have a bit more insight into my personal life. Most of you there know that I've already graduated with my engineering degree, and right now I'm currently working on uh, my master's in business administration. It's a concentration in finance in particular, uh, and in my first semester, I actually took a course uh, on microeconomic theory. And there I learned a bit more about the perfect competition model, which is what I wanna talk about in this video regarding graphics cards. In a nutshell, perfect competition is defined by five assumptions. The first is that market consists of many buyers. The second requirement is that the market consists of many sellers. Three, the firms that sell in the market are free to either enter or exit the market at any time. The fourth requirement is that the goods sold by the sellers in the market are assumed to be homogenous. In this case, it's a particular good, it's graphics cards. And we'll assume that the multiple GPU variants and slight clock speed deviations are that, that are homogenous. And number five, buyers and sellers in the market are assumed to have perfect information. This means that all resources and pricing strategies are known by all buyers and sellers in the market. Now, obviously the buyers in this market are us. We are the consumers, we want the graphics cards. It doesn't matter what we intend to use those graphics cards for. It could be gaming, mining, content creation. The purpose of the purchase is irrelevant. The fact is we are in the market to purchase graphics cards. When interest in ether spiked, that's the popular online currency so many are mining nowadays, Ethereum, graphics card demand spiked. In particular, RX 480s, 470s, 580s, and 570s, and GTX 1060s, 1070s, and 1080s, pretty much every mid to high range graphics card on the market all skyrocketed in demand. Older cards, including the R9 390, also flew off the dusty shelves of retired PC gamers. So we, the buyers, created this bubble. Most of us understand the basic supply-demand structure. As demand shifts to the right, equilibrium price rises. But this video will seek to dive much deeper into the matter. What essentially happens here, what happened with the graphics card market, was that the perfect competition model was broken, turned upside down. From our five rules, rule number two was broken. Once the initial supply of graphics cards was drained from Newegg and Amazon warehouses, among other places, the market was no longer perfectly competitive. And if we assume rule one was maintained, which we can indirectly verify with the jump in secondhand graphics card sales from sites like eBay and Craigslist, what we're left with is a graphics card market at temporary disequilibrium. Our perfect model assumed that the market would quickly converge to a single acceptable price. For RX 580s and GTX 1060s, that was somewhere in the low to mid 200s. When demand shifted, that price increased, but the market was still in equilibrium, at least until supply was dried up. Something else to mention, this is a shift in demand and not a slide along the original curve since demand increased for all prices when Ether interest spiked. Case in point, I sold an old RX 470 on eBay for 420 US dollars. I purchased it at Best Buy for 180 only a few months earlier. In rudimentary courses, we're taught that supply and demand curves are actually straight lines. This in fact is not the case, they're called curves for a reason. At lower quantities, supply tends to be elastic, meaning that small changes in price will yield a greater response in the quantity provided. But when demand curves shift as a result of sudden interest spikes, required supply is shoved into inelastic territory, where small product quantity changes yield enormous price disparities. This is because suppliers have difficult times scaling up production. Conversely, demand shifts leftward need only force suppliers to stockpile inventory. Not good in the long run, but slower to manifest from a price perspective in the short run. As a result, we're left with an awkward supply-demand plot. By this point, you might be thinking this is some sort of market shortage, right? So suppliers like EVGA, Gigabyte, ASUS, pretty much any graphics card manufacturer or rebrander out there is short on supply. So the reason why we have such high prices is because we don't have enough graphics cards in supply. Well, in a free market with near perfect competition, the answer is a bit convoluted. At first, yes, a market shortage does exist. However, suppliers will quickly catch on to what's happening. They're in charge of inventory after all. And once they raise prices to this point, the market will once again be in equilibrium. That's right. What we experienced earlier in 2017 was a market at equilibrium. There was no shortage here. The market was perfectly stable where it was, and it still kind of is that way. It's capitalism at work, love it or hate it. So in a nutshell, the market shortage occurred because prices were initially too low when the demand skyrocketed. Now this is not the fault of suppliers. If they had seen this coming months in advance, they could have deployed pricing strategies to kind of alleviate that sharp spike in price, right? They could have driven down inventory levels slowly or driven them up by increasing 
increasing or decreasing price accordingly. In this case, I recommend they probably slowly and gradually increase graphics card prices to a point where we were at an equilibrium lower than where we were when graphics cards were at their peak price. It's just a particular pricing strategy which may have worked in the situation. It's kind of hard to even play Captain Hindsight here because we aren't sure of all the variables involved. One thing is for sure though, raising prices in gradual steps early on would have given those with the most immediate demand a reason to purchase amid fears of rising, continuously rising prices, that is, leaving those on the fence at the mercy of time. Those who see a new graphics card providing the most utility will purchase earlier on and spare themselves from higher prices later on. Capitalism is like mother nature, ruthless and all about survival of the fittest. In this case, it's those who foresaw the demand spike months in advance, mainly those who pump and dump online currencies. So continuing with our economic analysis here, the market was at equilibrium once the prices became stable at around, what, four, 450 bucks for an RX 480, 580, sometimes even more than that. Those variances in prices are all a function of demand versus supply, but the market did have a fair value equilibrium price where demand and supply curves intersected, okay? So it was at equilibrium. No matter what anyone says, there was no shortage, market shortage, okay? The amount of graphics cards in supply had nothing to do with that shortage because prices were allowed to settle at a particular equilibrium. Now, the market shortage definition involves some sort of price ceiling. So if the government stepped in and said, hey, we're not gonna allow these suppliers to raise graphics card prices, we're gonna force them to keep the prices really low. So if that had happened, demand had stayed really high, supply had stayed really low, and the institution at hand said, nope, these are gonna stay really low prices, we're gonna stay around 150, 200 bucks for an RX 480, uh, then we would have had a market shortage because then graphics cards would have gone immediately out of supply and there wouldn't have been any available for sale. That is a market shortage, we don't have that. You can still buy an RX 480, you just gotta pay a lot more for it. That's a market at equilibrium, believe it or not. Similar things happen in the wakes of natural disasters. When hurricanes threaten US coastlines, suppliers ramp up prices to compensate for the impending demand spike. They're aware that their inventories will be drained, so they seek to obtain the largest profit possible when it happens. People see this as distasteful and unethical, but they only look at these situations from consumer perspectives. It can be costly and time consuming to restore supply levels to market equilibrium. People always blame capitalism, evil, greedy capitalism for the extremely high prices that we see in natural disasters, for example, sticking with our hurricane example. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, if a single gasoline supplier, let's say, jacked up his prices to $10 a gallon, that single gas station wouldn't make a single sale at all, unless it was the only gas station in the city, which then I would argue that government intervention is required. But if the government stepped in and said, well, we're gonna make prices stay at three bucks a gallon, everyone in the city is gonna go to that gas station, get gas, and then it's gonna dry up. You won't have any gas available for sale any more after that. The same analogy works for graphics cards as well. If suppliers hadn't raised prices, those consumers who found the most utility in the graphics cards in question would have experienced a market shortage in full force. In a self-correcting economy, those who demand the product the most will in turn pay the most for it. Better to have little supply at high price than no supply at all. This at least is how it works on paper. Many will always seek to unethically manipulate an innocent market, but this here isn't unethical. Neither is this. The seller isn't forcing anyone to purchase his or her product. If consumers desire it enough, they will pay the price. If consumers do not, they will abstain or look elsewhere, eventually forcing the asking price down or driving that competitor out of business. The only unethical construct involving the free market and higher prices, or price gouging as some would call it, would be the case of cartels, when a bunch of oligopolies decide to team up and all raise prices at the same time, which essentially gives the consumer no choice but to purchase the product at a much higher price. This is illegal and is actually, uh, in the case of the United States, federally maintained. So if the government sees that a few cell phone companies, for example, which there are only a few major cell phone companies in this country, decided to all raise prices substantially, the FTC would step in the Federal Trade Commission and say, oh, that's not allowed. I'm not sure if it'd be another bureau or entity uh, in the government, but they would all step in and say, nope, this isn't allowed, you can't do that. Uh, and then they would have to force prices back down. That is where I would say that's a fair government intervention property. I tend to be more just on the free market side of things in most cases, just because if a single graphics supply manufacturer decided to severely raise his prices, 
Well, no one's gonna buy it from that graphics card supplier, and the few people that would, would would somehow find utility in that product. Everyone else would purchase cards that are offered at a much cheaper price. That's how the free market works, and if that single company charging much more decided that it wasn't worth it to sell at that high of a price, he will be forced to lower his prices or go out of business. Again, survival of the fittest. There's also some debate as to whether or not government intervention in any sense of the word should be allowed in a truly free market. It really depends on where you stand regarding this fiscal policy. In essence, everyone's an economist, and this is really a political issue, which I will try to stay out of as much as I can. Uh, but I will say that in most cases, companies like Asus, Gigabyte, and others aren't going to price gouge the individual when they can help it. They are merely responding to demand stimuli from outside sources, including Ethereum mining. If you like this video, maybe uh, like my shirt. Be sure to give this one a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Also click that red subscribe button for more content like this. If you wanna see more topics like this discussed, leave your topic suggestion in the comments below. I pretty much get all of my suggestions from you guys. Stuff that I don't know, especially I like to know about, read about. I'll research it, then I'll make a video like this to explain to all of you. In this particular case, I really like learning uh, about the, the particular mechanisms as to why prices and supplies behave the way they do in wake of sudden demand spikes really interesting stuff. Stay tuned for more stuff like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.